So what is brand positioning and do you need to even think about it as a consultant? Well, here's the deal. What you are known for or known as is going to shape everything in your business from the referrals you get to the kind of clients that you work with and all of the ways that you communicate yourself. So let's hear more about what positioning is and what you can do to take care of it to make sure that you are exactly positioned as you choose to be in the market. That's what I'm talking about today. So check it out. Hey, it's Samantha Hartley of the Profitable Joyful Consulting Podcast. This season, we have been talking about the 10 drivers of success in a consulting business. And uh, today's driver falls in the category of brand and message. So when we are talking about brand positioning, what do we really mean? Well, before I talk about that specifically, I want to go back into the origin of the term, like way back in history. A lot of marketing terms, I'm sorry to say, are taken from uh, the military and from war. So you have a target audience, like who you're aiming at, and you uh, launch these marketing campaigns, just like in the Napoleonic Wars or something. Uh, and of course, we have positioning. So where is positioning from? Well, I was watching one of my favorite movies one time, which is Master and Commander, starring an extremely dreamy young Russell Crowe. And it's a movie about a lot of things, but in it, uh, these ships go all over the world and sometimes they end up in battle with each other. So there'll be a ship and a pirate ship, or there'll be two ships from different countries who are wanting to colonize something. Uh, and in order for them to like fight each other, they have to get close enough that their cannonballs will hit the other one, right? So positioning is about being able to strike accurately. And in marketing terms nowadays, positioning is really like, how do you want to be thought of relative to the other options in the marketplace? I like to think of positioning as if our mind was a filing cabinet, then which folder do you want people to put you in? What do you want to be known for or known as? And uh, all of us have file folders in our minds and in our heads. Uh, so there will be one for like work people and then one for like home and family. And so we'll have all of these kind of different, uh, like a tagging system, right? Um, all of these different folders and tags. And we want the people who need to know you and can be helped by you to figure out which one that you fit in. So uh, if you've ever had that thing happen where you see somebody in, uh, in a new place and you can't remember if you know them from like work or school or if they're somebody's parent or they're from like your dog agility group or something. Well, I've had that happen. And that just means that they hopped out of their folder and we're not sure which folder that they fit in. So in our work as marketers, one of the best things that we can do, not just for our end uh, target audience, for the people who might be potential clients, but also referral partners and our audience in general, is we want to help people understand how to think of it, uh, how to think of us. And I, I know that we often, and I very often will give the advice to avoid labels. You don't want to be uh, labeled as like, uh, you know, marketing consultant or, you know, whatever, because it's limiting. Like that doesn't, that doesn't really have meaning for people. However, you do want to have an identity that is crisp and clear enough that when they think about you, that it can be easy for them to go, oh, that's who I need, or oh, I need to refer her, or something like that. So we do need those clear identities. Uh, and a lot of times that clear identity is like who you help and what you do for them, right? So for example, uh, very obscure, I had somebody that I met a couple of years ago on LinkedIn, and I haven't really had any more interaction with her. Her name is Tori, uh, and she does something like um, customer retention or user retention for software companies. So I remember that mostly because I keep seeing her in my timeline, and it's in her LinkedIn headline. So I'll see like customer retention, user retention, however she refers to it, and then I'll see SaaS companies, which is software as a service, right? So I've learned that little capsule what she does, who she does it for. Uh, and then somebody came along recently and I was like, oh, I actually know somebody who can help you. So it helped, uh, that clarity helped me to put two things together. Her positioning helped me know who she's for and what she does for them, uh, what she wanted to be known as. That's the thing that all of us need to have in our businesses. Now, here's an interesting thing that I'm seeing happening right now. When my clients are coming to me, very often it's because they're trapped in a positioning that no longer fits them. 
So for example, uh, Aaron, whom you saw me talk about a couple of episodes of my podcast ago, you can uh, look this one up, Aaron Straza. She went from being a copywriter to a communications strategist. So what did we have to do for her? Well, when she came to me, she was like, well, I'm doing freelance writing and I have like a zillion clients and it's super hard work, but I don't know how, I don't know what I could do. Like, do I need to change the way I'm pricing my services? Do I need to change my billing or something like that? I was like, what are you actually doing with your clients? And when she explained it, I was like, whoa, you are doing a way larger role than like freelance writing. You're doing like strategy and figuring things out for them. Uh, so by working together on this, we kind of identified she's actually a communications strategist for them. So she began to say that and go uh, every conversation that she had and everywhere she went, she was talking about that new thing and she got a different kind of client attracted to her. She's doing different kinds of engagements, working with fewer clients and working more deeply with them, which is part of the um, amazing uh, result that she got. And from, from her efforts. And it, it is the heart of the work that I do, which is helping my clients to do deeper work with fewer clients for more money. So that repositioning, you'll have heard that term before, that repositioning of her brand is what allowed that to happen. Uh, she was, she's doing basically the same thing just for different kinds of clients. And of course, by, by doing basically the same thing, what I mean is the same th things that she was doing before, before, but not being identified that way. Now she's actually being compensating at, compensated as a strategist and not, uh, you know, what, uh, as a freelance writer only. So we've also had this happen with Gail who, uh, owned a, a like a, an agency where she and her huge team that she had working for her were doing all of this work for clients. Uh, that business was making like $5 million a year, but Gail was not making uh, like near that, like not enough. So it was a heavy business, too much overhead, too much cost, uh, too much just work in it and not enough compensation for her. She was like, I really, really need a raise and I don't know how to do this. So she got rid of that agency and repositioned herself, meaning new positioning, new brand positioning as a fractional CMO. So a lot of my clients are turning to fractional roles from different uh, things that they were doing before. Fractional CHRO, fractional CRO, revenue officer, um, uh, technical, all those different kinds of roles. CFO is a big one because not as many clients need a full-time CFO, but boy, does everybody need kind of CFO level insights into your business. So uh, you can definitely take that positioning from kind of singular expert in a thing and turn that into a C-level something. So Gail is an example of taking a big agency, repositioning herself, letting go of uh, almost all of her people, and then working as a fractional CMO. The opposite sometimes happens. I had someone come to me as a marketing consultant and say, hmm, this is like, I could do this, sure, but I have a lot of clients who actually need more help. Than this. And so I think I'm going to start doing some of the work for them. And so you can hear she kind of went in the exact opposite um, uh, direction. And she started hiring people and started getting clients and started doing work for them. Uh, she was doing that in a specific niche, which again, it becomes that brand positioning. So she's no longer just a marketing consultant for this audience. She is now uh, an agency a communications agency or strategy agency. I forget what she calls it, but for a, a specific niche. Now, you've heard all of those examples. I'll give you a quick um, re reminder, review of my brand. I'd been in business for many years as Enlightened Marketing. Now, it's my, it's the brand name of my company. So it's kind of like uh, the, I'm incorporated as that. But I don't necessarily have to have the brand name of my business be that and my positioning be that. So I called myself Enlightened Marketing because for many years I was a marketing consultant. I came out of marketing at the Coca-Cola company. So it made sense for me to do marketing. And I was doing marketing for many years until there came a time about five years ago, I started to realize, you know, we're doing a lot more stuff than just marketing. We're talking about how to scale. We're talking about teams, um, uh, pricing, finance, uh, uh, running a business, mindset, all of this other stuff. And so it really became more broadly about growth in general. Uh, and I thought I didn't want to be limited by the confines of being known as a marketing consultant anymore. So I repositioned myself, gave myself a new term. So it's more like something like a business growth advisor or a business growth partner is what I'm known for or known as to my clients. Uh, and then I began to uh, focus that way. So I let go of the enlightenedmarketing.com. You might have um, ever visited that website or seen that and, and um, just put out the shingle of samanthahartley.com. 
So it can seem like it's a smaller business, but it's actually a clearer brand for those that I'm working with. So you've heard these examples. And as you're listening, I want you to be thinking, what's my version of this? Maybe you want to transition into something different, something more fulfilling. Maybe you need a bigger brand than what you're um, the bigger, better version of yourself or something that's more expansive. You can also do something that is honed down and more focused on what your real uh, contribution and value is right now. And that doesn't mean it's going to be less money. A lot of times you honing in and focusing means uh, deeper work, fewer clients, more money. Uh, And definitely in many cases, it's a lot more profitable. So how do you do this? I have three things for you. What are your three steps in this? Three Ds. The first D is discern. What are you currently known for or known as in the market? I want you to look around and kind of listen. And uh, it's, you know, it's not always obvious. So it does really take some discernment to figure out like, what do people know me for right now? A great thing to do is to ask your current clients, um, past clients, referral partners, your brand constituents, people who care about you, love you, and know you really well. I'll do this with my team. I'll ask my team as well. When you think about what I do, uh, how would you describe me to someone else? A referral partner. Hey, when you refer me in, what do you say that I do? What? Do, how do you talk about um, my my services and what I do? So you want to discern what you're known for or known as right now. The second thing that you want to do is you want to decide on a new identity. Decide what you want that uh, new identity to be. What do you want to be known for or known as? Is it a C level something? Is it a, a strategy role? Uh, is it instead of a whole agency, you want to be known as an advisor and turn that into advisory services only? Okay, so think about what you want that uh, new thing to be. And actually, don't just think, but decide. You could have whatever you want, you just need to make the decision. Third piece declare. All of your marketing communications now, all of your communications, how you're being in the world in the marketplace needs to be with this new identity, with this new brand positioning. So for whom are you doing the thing and what are you doing for them? Uh, Be consistent. When you're creating those posts, be consistent when you're talking about what you do. And if you need to correct others or yourselves, you can say, actually, I was doing that for a really long time. And now what I'm doing is really more of this kind of a thing. Or if you say it about yourself, gosh, I have the habit of saying this, but really what I'm doing is more of this. You can uh, differentiate from what you were doing before uh, and talk about what you're doing now. Those are the three steps that you need to take to rebrand or reposition your brand for your consulting business. Uh, And positioning is part of brand and message. And brand and messaging are one of my 10 drivers of a successful consulting business. Now, if you'd like to get my free resource on that topic and take the self-assessment, then you can just go to samanthahartley.com slash super. Uh, and you'll find there the 10 drivers of business consulting success. Uh, and you can download that and take the self-assessment and then let me know how you did. With that, I am wishing you a profitable and joyful consulting business. Thanks for watching. I'd appreciate it if you'd like this episode. And if you enjoyed the show, why not subscribe? Be sure to click the bell to get notified when new episodes drop.